Dr. Sandra Cabot, MD, is with us today. Dr. Cabot is world famous for her books. She speaks all over the country to medical conferences, TV shows, radio shows. Dr. Cabot has been a guest on my show many, many years. And it's always special to have Dr. Cabot on because she brings to the audience a vast depth of knowledge based on her personal experience from her medical practice as well as consulting with doctors all over the world. Dr. Gabo, it's great to have you with us. It's great to be here with you, Dan. You know, yeah. talking about progesterone is really a very important issue, and I'd like for us to kind of elaborate on this by beginning the definition of progesterone and why it's so important. Yeah, well, progesterone is a natural hormone produced in the ovaries, so men don't produce it. But it's a very, very important hormone for women. And progesterone is much underestimated by the medical profession as a form of treatment. The pioneer of natural progesterone was a woman, ha ha. Very and good. yeah, it, uh, known as Dr. Katerina Dalton. Yes. So she was an English physician. I'm sure you've heard of her. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. And, you know, it was a long time ago in the 1950s and 60s, Dr. Dalton pioneered the use of natural progesterone for women who had issues with mental health. So women who were very depressed, had very severe premenstrual tension or postnatal depression. And I learned about her work when I was a young doctor. And I've done a lot of research on progesterone and I've used it in thousands and thousands of women over many years. Yeah. Yeah, this is really important. I know that uh, in this day and age, we're hearing a lot about bioidentical hormones. Yes. We get a lot of questions yes. from my own patients as well as uh, customers at Healthy Habit, yeah. and they all want to know more about that. So and this might be a good time for us to delve into the bioidentical hormones. Yes. Well, bioidentical means that the hormone is exactly the same as that produced in your own body. So yes. if your body doesn't recognize any difference from your own naturally produced hormones. So it's much safer. And, you know, unfortunately for a lot of women who have hormone imbalance, they get treated with the oral contraceptive pill, which is synthetic hormones, and can have side effects. Yes. The oral contraceptive pill should only be used for contraception, not to fix a hormone imbalance, because it will generally make a hormone imbalance worse. And of course, um, it's not particularly good for your liver to take the contraceptive pill for 10, 20 years. So natural progesterone is something that is completely safe. And I thought, um, you know, we should discuss what are the symptoms of progesterone deficiency because well, a lot of sure. people don't understand that. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of the, the, the guys uh, that I talk to, they, they say, gosh, my wife is going through some hormonal changes. Yeah. Uh, she's just not the same person I married yeah. years ago. Yes. And uh, then I say, well, you know what? It's time to have a, a complete hormonal profile conducted to find out more about what's going on with their hormones. That's right. You can have a, a blood test or a saliva test to check the progesterone and you, you've got to check it on day 21 of the cycle because it only peaks then, you see. Okay. So if you do it at the wrong <coughs> time, it's meaningless. So what I go by, uh, Dr. Dan, is I look at the symptoms of progesterone deficiency because they're very, very characteristic. And you can usually pick a progesterone deficiency from the history. For example, the woman will have gynecological issues. I see. Such as heavy and or painful periods. Okay. She may have infrequent menstruation, irregular, which we see in polycystic ovaries, very yes. common. Um, she may have fibroids, adenomyosis, which causes very painful periods. Um, she may have breast pain premenstrual migraines, which are very severe, premenstrual insomnia, um, and mood disorders that can be quite severe just before menstruation. And then when the bleeding starts, the tension and depression goes. That was my yeah. next uh, comment or question because that's when the guys mention it. They say, gosh, my wife's going through some, some terrible uh, changes and her, yes. her attitude is bad. Yes. And it's only, it's, it's a monthly thing. Yes. And I say, well, if it's a cyclic pattern, then it's obviously related to the hormones. Yes, that's right. And then, uh, you know, if the guys understand that, well, you know, they, they can have more sympathy. <laughs> that's well, important, sure. you know. But sure. The, uh, because, uh, you know, progesterone deficiency can have a profound effect on mental health in women. Um, the other thing, 
um, that's interesting. Um, if your progesterone's low, you can have a low sex drive. And your husband or your partner is, you know, definitely not going to be happy about that. So sure. um, the progesterone can really help with that. Also, uh, breast pain, which I think we mentioned, reduce fertility. And the other thing that's interesting, if you have progesterone deficiency, that can make an autoimmune disease worse. Isn't that interesting? Really? That's yeah. very interesting. I think so. And that is because progesterone doesn't just affect our uterus or our fertility, it affects every part of our body, our nervous system, our immune system. So sure. women who have, for example, a thyroid problem or lupus or some other autoimmune problem will find that progesterone will benefit them particularly if they also have the symptoms of progesterone deficiency. Very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Well, I know that in, in balancing the progesterone, it certainly can solve a lot of these issues. Yes. And the big question comes up is the dosage. Yes. It's always proportionate to how low is the progesterone. Yes, that's right. Um, well, first of all, progesterone is safe, so you don't have to be nervous about using it. Um, in some countries, you need a prescription, for example, in Australia yes. and Europe, but in the USA, the wonderful USA, um, you can just buy it at the health food store, which I think is good because it's a very safe hormone. So you can have it as a cream that you just rub into your skin. Yes. Rub into your skin or as a lozenge, which we call a troche, that right. you put here between the gum and the cheek and it dissolves through the cheek. Or you can have it as a capsule, micronized progesterone. Or you can even have it as a vaginal pessary. So there's lots of ways uh, to get it into your body. And yeah. uh, the, the big question that comes up is how quickly will the patient begin to feel the benefits when they start using the progesterone? Well, you'll feel the benefits um, that month. It works within a few days. Beautiful. Yeah, hormones work within two or three days. And the dose varies anything from 30 milligrams to 100 milligrams. And women with endometriosis may need 400 milligrams. Is there a particular age as to when this onset usually is noticed in women? Well, you know, progesterone can help women of all ages, from teenagers, so adolescent girls who have uh, menstrual pain or heaviness, um, can benefit from progesterone, much better than giving them the contraceptive pill. Yes. And then you've got perimenopausal women who are not making enough progesterone as well, so they might be in their 40s and 50s. I see. And they still need it. So it's a thing that uh, really applies to women of all ages, progesterone. You know, yeah. I have found this to be a missing link in the diagnosis of migraine. Yes. I'm so glad you mentioned that earlier yes, because right. it often, almost always goes overlooked with conventional allopathic practitioners. Yes, you're Patients right. end up in my office and they say, hey, look, this migraine syndrome needs to be solved. I'm going, yes. and it's really driving them crazy. Yes, you're right, Dan. And... Uh, it's so easy to fix. It's, that's the thing, you know, when you know how to do it. Um, and then one thing, if you've got migraine, definitely you want to take magnesium. I call magnesium the great relaxer. I love this product. You have really put together a fabulous combination here. Yes. It's like a multiple vitamin, but multiple magnesium. Yeah, there's, there's four different types of magnesium. There's taurine, and there's a little bit of selenium and zinc. So it's anti-inflammatory. But what it does is it helps to relax your whole body, your nervous system, your muscles. And if you take it every day, it will reduce these awful migraines and it will help you to stay more relaxed and have a better sleep, particularly uh, during those bad days before your menstrual period is due. So you take this with the natural progesterone cream um, and you will find the headaches are a lot better and you won't need to take so many painkillers. And this is uh, magnesium for men as well. Oh, magnesium's it's, great for men. It's very yeah. important. We've had a lot of our, our um, male patients with cardiovascular issues, uh, heart attacks, and all kinds of issues. And this has been, I think, kind of a missing link in yes. helping to solve that uh, balance of their overall metabolism. Yes, I think a lot of people are deficient in magnesium. And you can have a blood test and all it shows is the tip of the iceberg because yes. most of the magnesium is in your bones. Exactly. The vast majority is in your bones and uh, inside your cells. So, you know, your blood level may look normal or, you know, healthy, but it's not representative of your total body magnesium. So I find a lot of people are low in magnesium because they don't eat enough leafy greens 
Um, also stress depletes your body of magnesium, sugar depletes your body of magnesium, and yes. our soils are often deficient. So, you know, that's one thing that I take religiously is my magnesium. Sure. Yeah. We well, you know Dr. Cabot as a conventionally trained allopathic MD. It's very impressive and refreshing to see your vast knowledge in nutrition. How did yeah. this whole thing come about in your career? Well, as a medical student, I was fascinated by the conventional medicine and traditional medicine, naturopathic medicine, and you know that's going back in the late sixties when and early seventies when I was at medical school and uh, I used to be fascinated. I did courses. I used to sit in with naturopathic doctors and see how they operated. Yes. And I'm a member of the Australian College of Nutritional Environmental Medicine, so I've been studying it for 40 years. And, you know, holistic medicine is the most scientific medicine because it treats the cause, doesn't it? Absolutely. And yeah. that's really what the patients want. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because when conventional allopathic MDs see their patients, they don't discuss what we're talking about right now, about getting to the root cause of the symptoms. No. The patient shares with them what they're suffering with, what the symptoms are, yes. and the doctor prescribes accordingly. He may run some tests, yes. and when, when he comes up with his diagnosis, he's going to prescribe accordingly. Hmm. At that point, I think it would be more fair if the doctor would say, now, this medication is designed for symptomatic relief. It's not designed for anything beyond that. Perhaps you could yeah. elaborate further. Yeah. Well, you know, a, a lot of doctors don't know about natural progesterone because it's not promoted by drug companies. You cannot patent a natural substance. So you can't yes. patent a natural hormone. Um, you can't patent magnesium or vitamin B. So these things are not really emphasized at medical school. So it's not surprising that a lot of doctors are not confident in using natural things to treat the cause. They're not really trained for that unless they do special courses okay. in nutritional medicine. Okay. But um, the wonderful thing about progesterone is that it is treating the cause. Um, and for example, let's mention polycystic ovarian syndrome. You've heard you of that, right? I'm sure, Polycystic absolutely. ovaries or polycystic ovarian syndrome is very, very common. And it's more common today because women are stressed um, they eat too much carbohydrate, refined food, and they're exposed to more toxic chemicals. Their, their liver may not be breaking down. I see. So the symptoms of polycystic ovaries are your menstrual period will not come regularly. So it should come every 28 days, right? Your, your menstrual period should be bang, regular, every 28 days, and it should be consistent in the amount of bleeding and the length of bleeding. But for a woman with polycystic ovaries, she may not get a period for two or three months. I see. Or she may only get a period twice a year. Oh my goodness. And then she'll get it regular for a while and then it will disappear. So, you know, it's not a good thing to miss your menstrual bleeding. So what can we do about this? Well, we need to know what to do about it. It's very, very common. And what's the diagnostic workup? Well, Basically, sometimes you won't find much in a blood test because it's not really um, menopause, it's not dramatic. It's a hormone imbalance um, from the ovaries. So you will find low progesterone, that's about it. Okay. If you do a pelvic ultrasound, you may not see anything abnormal. There may not be any cysts, even though we call it polycystic ovaries, there may not be any cysts. Um, but what you may see is these tiny little um, cysts, almost microscopic on the ultrasound, lined up around the edge of the ovary. I see. And that shows you that the eggs are not getting out of the ovary. Okay. So those tiny little cysts represent the eggs that are travelling to the surface of the ovary, trying to get out, and they get stuck. And if you don't ovulate, in other words, the egg doesn't pop out of the ovary, you won't produce progesterone. So you have progesterone deficiency. And that's a very profound deficiency. And how is that challenged? How is that corrected? Once again, with natural progesterone. Too easy. So you just prescribe progesterone. The woman uses it every day. And bang, it'll bring her a menstrual period. 
And what it does, a natural progesterone, is it sends the right message to the pituitary gland, okay. and then it reboots the pituitary gland, which then sends the right messages to the ovary, and you start ovulating. And I've got to tell you a funny little story about a lady that I saw. Um, well, it, she wasn't very happy, but I saw the funny side of it, and I was able to fix her, thank God. But I wrote sure. this book here, uh, Dr. Dan, called How Not to Kill Your Husband. I love the title. All men need that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, so How Not to Kill Your Husband is all about progesterone. Because I saw this patient one day, and uh, she was a really bad sufferer of progesterone deficiency and polycystic ovarian syndrome, right? And I'd never seen her before. She was a new patient. She sat down and I said, how can I help you? And she said, I am sick of lying in bed every night and thinking of 30 different ways to kill my husband. Really? It was deadly oh serious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is bizarre. I said, oh, you poor thing. Um, and she was really, really agitated and, you know, she was so angry, this lady. And I said, well, let's take a deeper history. And I said, how long since you've had a menstrual period? She said, oh, two years. But she wasn't old. She was only in her late 30s. So I right. knew there was something going on. So we, we ran hormone tests. She had no progesterone and she had really high levels of testosterone, high levels of male hormones. So what okay. we did is uh, we put her on a low carbohydrate diet because she was way overweight and had a fatty liver. So we took her off grains and sugar. So she was put on low carbohydrate and plenty of protein and progesterone cream and magnesium. Did she have facial hair as well? Yeah, she had facial hair. She looked very masculine, okay. very overweight. She was an android body shape, you know, broad shoulders, muscular, hairy. And, you know, basically she was turning into a man. Yes. Hormonally, the poor woman. And she just, I don't know, she didn't understand it. And she'd been to doctors and she was really, really angry. And her poor husband was the butt of the anger, but, you know, it wasn't his fault. Sure. So it was amazing, the response, because within two months of giving her progesterone, she menstruated. And this is after a long time. And then she kept menstruating. She had a regular period every month. Uh, with my diet, my uh, fatty liver diet, yes, she lost weight, she relaxed, and she couldn't thank me enough. You know, and as I say, well, why don't more doctors know about natural progesterone? So I dedicated that book to her, and guess what? Her husband is still alive today. How exciting! <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you writing that book, yeah. and. Uh, I know everybody will want to get their personal copy and enjoy reading it as well. Yeah, and um, this book is available as an e-book as well, oh, as great. a hard copy. And uh, go to my website, liverdoctor.com, because you will find all these things there. And we have some really good kits um, in our shopping cart, you know, the special deals uh, that are very reasonably priced where you get the book and the progesterone. And um, you, you can also uh, listen to... CDs, videos, things like that. So uh, visit liverdoctor.com and um, also you can phone our office and have a talk to one of our naturopaths who also has a lot of understanding of these women's hormonal issues. Very good, Dr. Cabot. Thanks for being with us. This has been very exciting. Yes, it has.